Okay, I am here live with you guys, and we'll be doing a quick uh, impression of the ECP T4, which is this one here, and the Hagerman tuba, which is this one here. Uh, I'll be doing the impression between the two. Um, actually, we'll be in high Z initially, and I'll do low Z. Um, but we'll do go back and forth between the two. Actually, we'll start in low Z for the ECP as well. So uh, ECP T4, uh, hybrid tube amp. That's the, the tubes you can see there. Um, it has a balanced out or XLR out, not necessarily balanced. Um, what's up, Marcello? What's up, Ben? <laughs> um, and then obviously volume knob, fun stuff there. And then a toggle for low Z for down and high Z for up. Uh, the Hagerman tuba. Uh, and also this uses um, 12 AU T7s or 12, uh, pretty much the pretty standardized 12 AU Ts, I believe. You can find, and I have all the details in for both of the amps or the links to their web pages below. Um, and also to the Verites, since I'll be using those. Um, also to the Chord TT2. So Chord TT2 is the DAC, uh, ECP T4 is one of the amps. Uh, the Hagerman tuba is the other amp, and I'll be using uh, this thing over here to switch between the two, um, to basically quickly switch between the two. Uh, so the Hagerman tuba, it has a low Z input here, and a high Z input or output here. Uh, interesting thing with this one is, I have it warming up, but you actually to turn it on is you uh, push in the volume knob to turn it on and off. Uh, right now I'm using an adapter because I'll be using an XLR cable. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Cobuzz will be the audio for this and going from there. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's actually, so uh, the tuba, ben, the, he used to offer an option to have wood on these. Um, but as I, I, th I believe he stopped doing that though. So... The, he, you can do it yourself. It's not too difficult. You just have to have the wood cut to, to size and, you know, do the polish yourself. Uh, so with that being said, he might still do it. But as, as I recall, I want to say off the top of my head that he, he does not. He, um, you have to do it yourself. But he used to do, uh, the maker of the two, but he used to do that. And the reason I'm comparing these two is this is a, uh, you can actually, you, you can't actually order these anymore, the T4s. The tubas are readily available. And the interesting thing about this is this is a pretty expensive amp for the, the ECP T4. Uh, the tuba is about roughly a quarter the price. I mean, it's a little bit more than a quarter the price, but that's more or less where the pricing kind of falls between these two. And there, it's interesting because I, I chat in the different forums you can see below and also in the discords and what have you, random discords. Uh, I talk about... The, the east the tuba being basically a baby version of the t4 so my hands are cold also so i'm gonna probably be doing this a lot because this feels really nice <laughs> so they do get warm um, but not not so warm that you're gonna burn yourself in fact the the t the tuba is not as warm up top but the tubes are more exposed and also on this one i actually was uh given this tuba as a demo unit from a, a forum member Jeremy, thank you very much for uh, offering this up for me to demo. Uh, once I'm done with this, I'll be sending it on to another person for them to demo. So they will probably also do a review. Potentially, we'll see what happens with there. But uh, he also provided a bunch of different uh, EL84 tubes for it. And it also has the, the tube monger tube savers to kind of make it a little bit easier to do the tube swapping and what have you. Um, so with that being said, I, I did find them very similar in sound before I even start into the sound live impression stuff. Uh, they, they're both pretty close as far as like that signature sound. I do think that the T4 is kind of across the board, like just, it is a better amp across the board. Um, but it's they still have that same signature, and and for the money, the the tuba is pretty fantastic. It's really really good actually. Uh, it's actually I I think for my time with it, I would actually put it as uh, if you can jump to that price point, which I think it sits around I think around six between six and seven hundred dollars. 
So it's not necessarily entry level tube amp, but it's definitely right there. And I, I honestly would say save up and just get that. And, and that would be your entry. Cause that thing, this it's really good. Um, and then, yeah, so I guess we'll dive into it. I'm going to start with the wonderful ECP first. Uh, I'm using the Verite closed. We're going to start with the, one of my favorite tracks I, 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 for basically testing this type of stuff. Um, both headphones, amps, DAX, that kind of fun stuff, but it's a uh, go, go penguin signal in the noise. It's one of their more recent, uh, tracks. Um, let me get a sip of some dirty chai here. Elric, what's going on, my man? <sighs> okay. Uh, jump right in. You can see I have my little mouse going. You can see it there. Um, signal in the noise, get the volume up. Uh, Ooh, punchy. So I'm in low Z right now, and it's 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 very punchy, uh, with the the kick drum and what have you, and then the 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 high hats and like the the drums are just fantastic. Um, and you know, the piano in the background, and then the strumming of the stand up bass, very good. Throws wide. Um, <laughs> baby metal i'll do baby metal eventually um but yeah pretty great and that piano sounds just so good like this whole track like the uh the drums to the the piano and the layering of it and the way that the separation is good just and i'm probably talking way too loud because i probably have this too loud i did forget to volume match so i will do that here in a little bit um, this is on low Z. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do low Z for a big a portion of this, uh, track, and then I'll switch to high Z and go back through it. And then I'll do the same thing for the tuba. And then we can play around and do our normal live chat, fun, fun stuff. Um, oof, man, really enjoying this. And this combo with the Verites, by the way, really good. And, uh, after we do the, those tests, I'll go ahead and do maybe, I have, I was thinking of doing, I might have to mute the mic, but I was thinking of doing the HD800 um, and the LCD GX as a kind of different technologies to some level or open back or, you know, different flavors to kind of give you an idea of those differences. Um, but yeah, right now, like this, I really like this a lot. So let's, oh, that piano is fantastic. Um, the tone seems right. It's got a nice stage to it. I mean, obviously the headphones play into that, um, but everything's just layered. It's fuller. It has a really nice fullness to it. And I always, this is something I always say and people make fun of me for it, but the, I always find that tube amps tend to have a, a, a richness and a fullness to them that, that solid states just can't compete with or don't have usually majority of the time. I've yet to really find a proper, um, a solid state that, that gives me the same enjoyment out of um, that I get from a, a either a hybrid or a proper uh, tube amp. So let's, that's a great track. Um, let's, yeah, I was definitely talking loud there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, at least you don't have to worry about multiple people uh, uh, talking and, and getting the volume all crazy. Uh, let's see here. Another fun thing. So just switched it over to high Z on the ECP and turn the volume down a little bit. Uh, it has a nice wood side and you can actually do, if you wanted to, you could, uh, pull these out and basically make your own custom sides if you would like to, uh, if you have the capabilities or means to do that. It's a, it's like a brushed aluminum that's been painted black, I believe. Um, it has, but it has like this nice texture to it. I don't know if it shows up in the, in this video, I can maybe punch in real quick, see if that will do it. Uh, might just go real ugly and crazy looking. Um, but it has like this brushed aluminum for this one. And then the Hagerman tuba is more of a, um, almost, it almost reminds me of a hammered style. It has like a, and then, and then painted style and it's uh pretty interesting the the top plate is definitely more solid than the sides the sides actually can flex in a little bit but that's not a big deal uh it's a pretty it's a solid build and it's a good good build quality for both both are decently heavy uh 
and they have good feet on them. They won't move around too much. Um, so give me an idea of the weight. I would say that in all truth, I think that the tuba might actually be heavier. Yeah, I think the tuba is just slightly heavier. Um, anyways, hi Z, ECP T4. Back to Go Go Penguin from the beginning on high Z. Get the volume back up. And so high Z, I, oof, definitely way more punchier. Um, definitely more engaging, more with the Verites at 300 ohm. Um, oof, that punch is so good. Uh, the the kick drum is just going, and then the stand up bass. Yeah, Elric, I'll, I'll let you know uh, the tubes right now. That's another thing with tube amps is, um, especially these ones. I had to pause so I can <laughs> talk through the music. Uh, the oh, I actually uh, let's see here tuba. I actually have it up live. Let's see, let's say fifty ohm input impedance, five thirty five output impedance, ten three hundred fifty watt output power. Uh, this is a Designed to operate with either low impedance grotto. <laughs> grotto. He specifically calls out Grotto as the low impedance, and then Sennheiser is the high impedance. Um, internal switching power supply. Uh, it is a um, parafeed triode into an impedance matching transformer. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, the link below, uh, Elmer, it goes right to the tube page for the Hagerman site, um, if that helps. Um, Let's see, back to the high Z. Um, everything's definitely more uh, engaging, more present with the high Z with these headphones. Um, really enjoyable, really engaging. Oh man, and that stand up bass is just really good in the piano in the background, and then the separation. Um, It's, it's this is really fantastic. I, I would say, uh, detail wise, like I'm I could pick up all the different little slight little snaps of the drum as it's like you know, it's going and it's just it's really fantastic sounding. And then the piano, like you can actually hear the the piano keys striking if that makes sense. And then the the strumming of the stand up bass, yeah, I can hear uh like his hand slapping the wood. And I can hear the uh, the, the way that the, the release of the strum, like, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, like the vibration. Um, God. It's uh, definitely more engaging on the high Z with these. Uh, I would say that's definitely the way I would. I, I listen with these on high Z personally. And then the, and the ECPT4 is my own personal. I purchased this myself. Um, so it is, it is mine. Um, so now... Let's switch over to the Hagerman tuba. If I can, uh, so you can see that. So now we're in the low Z Hagerman tuba. Volume's at zero. We'll go back to signal and the noise on low Z. So this is actually, you know, I'm going to switch it to high Z because that's where we were off last off with the uh, ECP T4. So this should give it more of a uh, apples to apples ish comparison. So we will do that this time, or with this here. Um, so I think I'm roughly about the same volume. Yeah, right about, actually about there. So it's interesting on the T4 on high Z, it's, like what, just past seven o'clock, uh, nine o'clock, just past nine o'clock, sorry, nine o'clock, and then on the Hagerman, it's about noon for the, about the same volume. Hey, JS, what's up? <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'll be getting the Empyrean, um, hopefully, I get the Empyrean in, I believe, probably in a week or so, roughly. Uh, it still has to be shipped out from uh, Chrono, so... Uh, I'll chat with him after this uh, and, and 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 figure that out. But yeah, I should be getting the, the Empyrean in, and then from there we're going to send it hopefully to Marcello, but I'm not sure yet. I still have to confirm who it's going to next, but we're I'm going to shoot for Marcello so we can do a 
good comparison of it. Um, so with the Hagerman tuba compared to the, it's, it's like, it's, it's so close in signature, like the way the sounds are, but the staging is brought in a little bit more. I'm not getting it as wide. Uh, the details are, the details are there. Yeah, I'm picking it. It's just, it's just the, and then the separation is there, but I would say it's a little bit shallower and not as wide of a stage. It's, it's, it's brought in. Uh, it's not as punchy. Doesn't have the same punch. Uh, and the highs aren't as like crisp. I mean, it's still punchy, but it's just not as it's not as impactful as with the uh, uh, ECPT four. And I would say that the, honestly, the piano's more forward. I'm getting more piano forwardness. Like the tones of the piano are more forward. Lo lovely. It sounds lovely though. The piano sounds really good. It's it's on the the piano is really good and it's on par with the T four as well. It's just more forward. So I'm it's definitely the piano's more in your face. So it, Yeah. And then the 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 strumming of the the stand up bass drum isn't as impactful either. It's it's, it's um, kind of gets a little bit lost in the the kick drum, but it's it's more twangy though. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I should be using the the tuba with uh, grottos. Actually, I do have a pair of grottos. I could probably do that real quick as a fun experiment. Um, let me switch back. So I think with that being said, I think that's what we're looking at with the, between the, the, the ECPT four and the, and the Hagerman tuba is that it's, it's the general signature is roughly the same. Uh, I would say that your the stage is brought in. It's not as deep. Uh, detail isn't as good. Um, the piano, I'm not sure where the piano lives on a frequency range or in a tonal, you know, mids, whatever. But it, the piano is more forward on the Hagerman. Uh, the 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 kick drum and the and the the stand up bass. I was picking up the stand up bass, but it was it sounded more twangy. Like I was picking up more of like that the the reverb of the like the strumming of the the strings on the Hagerman than I did on the the T four. But the T4 had more impactful bass um, and more impactful lows. Uh, the detail was better. The stage was wider. It was deeper. Separation was a little bit better. Um, overall, uh, the T4 is, I mean, it's right now, it's my number one. Like, it's my primary listening. So my primary listening on a daily basis is the Chord TT2 as a DAC to the, the ECP T4. And that's my daily listening uh, setup. Um, now that being said, the, if I was to be jumping into tubes for the first time and, and I didn't necessarily, I mean, this is expensive, but as far as like a budget tube setup or something that would be, I mean, probably in game for a lot of people, uh, outside of us, wonderful, crazy audio files for like a headphone setup, I would say the Hagerman with a Bifrost 2, uh, would be pretty pretty great combo to be honest uh let's see another good let's see the i mean the rme you might be able to put like a an rme dac in there as well or uh, any other dac and uh, depending on how your preference is if you like it might be a good combo to bring in like something a little bit brighter as far as a dac goes because that's to be a synergy thing uh to to make it a little bit to warm to, to, to brighten up the tubes a little bit maybe or that tube signature if that's more your style but I would say the this this is a really good little hyper tube amp for the price. Definitely a pretty good solid setup. Uh, that being said, uh, what what headphones should I use? Actually, I'll use the Grattos real quick since he does say that's something that we should be utilizing. I believe it was low Z I said for the Grattos. Um, oh, get these things wonderful purple people eaters off. I also have the full cow Stelia here that we can probably play with. Um, and I also have, like I said, the HD 800. It's my HD 800 with SDR mod. 
and I also have the LCD GX, so a plan R. I kind of want to do the LCD GX at least a mi as a minimum, as an alternative listen, because I would like to give you guys the impression of how a plan R will do with these, because that's always something that comes up a lot with, with um, tube amps, and usually hybrids are a little bit better than standard uh, tube amps for plan R's. So <laughs> I have these, they're the Grotto Labs SR125E, the Prestige series. And uh, if you're new to who I am, <laughs> literally the reason I bought these is because of these Yaxi purple pads. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, their plastic uh, headband is kind of like that vinyl fake leather. Uh, they're, you know, can't can't disconnect the uh, the cables. Cable's a big, giant honking thick thing it's, you know uh kind of thing it has a replaceable little thing there so going into the Hagerman at Lozy. let's see how these and these by the way the um these are okay the, the sound was okay with these when i listened to them on when i haven't really listened to these i'm not gonna lie to you guys uh so these are in low Z. let's go back over signal and noise just because um, God, I have to crank these up to get the volume. Wow, actually, hmm. the uh, <laughs> get an idea of what they look like on on the head. Um, wow, these are actually much more enjoyable than I recall them being. Listening with the tuba they got warmed up the it's not as bright i would say that these are they, they kind of with with the tuba it kind of reminds me of a brighter porta pro with a little more detail i mean it's, it's actually it's pretty enjoyable <laughs> um and obviously I have the Yaxi pads and what have you on there. I'm picking up the bass. The bass isn't that impactful. It kind of reminded me of um, the, it's just that low Z. It's just not as punchy. But the highs are definitely there. The piano is definitely uh, more forward. Like it's, it's accentuating the piano even more with these. And then the highs are definitely pumping. Um, these are probably leaking like nobody's business. Actually, not too bad. These are open back. Um, hopefully, that's not horrible. I'm surprisingly impressed with these, to be honest, with this combo. Um, I don't think I'd use these all the time, but I mean, that's that's surprisingly a really good combo with that. They're definitely on the brighter side, uh, and the base is not super warm. The mids aren't that warm, but uh, it's with the tuba it does accentuate those areas and gives it a little more warmth it's interesting um <laughs> what's up dp what's up drifting bunnies um yeah and that's the thing like that's uh, you know for that kind of deal like this isn't a bad combo i'm actually impressed and then obviously you can get higher in grottos and they'd probably be that's it's really impressive good 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 combo um so synergy, synergy matters. It does, because on solid state, these are not my favorite. In fact, I never use them because, well, one, because I, I have other stuff that's, in my opinion, a better listen. But uh, it's, if you're into grottos, the tuba, it's a good combo. Um, let's see as I put my more headphones on the ground. Uh, Elnric, uh, I hear from you if your current chain changes your perspective. Yeah, JS. Um, I'll, yeah, because when I had the Empyreans way back, I had a completely different chain. So the, this will be interesting for me as well because I was not the biggest fan of the Empyrean when I heard it. And, and it's not that I wasn't the biggest fan. I thought they were really good for what they were. And if you're, I, uh, that's in the forum, headphones forum. You can go look at the link below. Um, no, I'm not pointing at my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the uh, link below it for the headphone form, I have it in there. You can go and then find the Mez Empyrean thread. Got a little bit off track the other day, but it's it's back to should be back to a more um, fun 
talking and what have you and everyone's experiences. Uh, but in, in the beginning of that, uh, I did have a bunch. I had the Empyrean for about just over a month or around a month, I want to say. And my experience with the Empyrean at that time with my that current chain, and I mentioned it in that, was that um, it was really fun. It was a fun headphone. Uh, it was still even divisive back then. I remember letting people hear it and what have you. And... Um, Anything from the audiophile side of my friends to the non-audiophile side, it was even divisive amongst them. Uh, so non-audiophiles was it was a kind of a hit or miss, and then same with the audiophile audiophile friends. Um, the the part for me that was odd was I think I'm I'm relatively sensitive to what they call the planar wall, as someone was telling me about, because um, I get this wall of noise a lot of times with planars that that it'll hit some sometimes with different tracks and it's it's tough for me to describe, but it's basically like, it's like, instead of having all the separation, it seems like everything at once just kind of hits me. Um, and it, and it goes away, but it's, it's one of those things that will kind of throws you off. Um, and the other big part with the, specifically the Mez that really, that, uh, it could also, and it's this part of, I, I always think of it as part of my, my personal issue, um, with the way that they have the, the traces in the, the drivers, um, it, the base feels like it's coming from up high and, and kind of around, which is not a big deal. Um, but the problem for me was that the, the traces that kind of are aimed at your ear holes, your, well, your hole, ear balls, um, those traces, it, it felt like I was getting, and it's not that the treble is bright or, or overly like, it's not civil or anything like that. It's just that it's, it felt beamed into my head. <laughs> and so that was like throwing off a lot of my enjoyment of that headphone not that it was bad it's just for me it would just it kind of i felt like i was being and not to, this is beamed even could be considered strong it just felt like that was the the main thing and so that was kind of my issue with it but i'm really interested in trying it with these these amps and and the the cord and the fonder and what have you um so yeah Go from there. Uh, Elric from Topology. Yes, they are actually very, very similar uh, topology wise. Uh, the T4 and the, the the tube actually share a lot of similar um, design philosophy, from my understanding. And it's and it tells like they have a very similar signature. It's just that the the uh, this from even just now, just telling you right now, like the I would say this is a baby T4 as far as the sound. Um, profile, if, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, especially, yeah, I would agree that uh, JS uh, Delta Sigma Dax can exaggerate some, some of that beaming treble sensation. So I'm really looking forward to trying it with the Bifrost and the, the Chord uh, TT2 here. Um, but so between back to the these wonderful amps, I would, I mean, really. I have nothing bad to say about either of them. Uh, it's, I, I think it would be kind of cool. You can do some cool stuff with this where you can, you can add your own sides to it. You can, you know, add your own little, um, tube savers and get it, you can dress it up a little bit. Both are pretty industrial looking. The Hagerman is definitely way more industrial looking. Uh, the, the T4 body and, and case is, is a little more, um, audiophile esque, I want to say, uh, but depending on what you're going for, neither look bad. I mean, I'm looking at them right now. Neither don't, they, neither of them look out of place on my desk, if that makes sense. But my desk is a mess. I have toys everywhere and crap everywhere. So as my wife says, crap everywhere, get rid of it, put it away. <laughs> um, so with that, uh, I, let's jump into one of these other headphones unless somebody else has another question. Let's see. Hey, Martin, you're fine, man. Not, not too late. Uh, basically, real quick, Martin, I'll do a quick summary for you real quick. Uh, let me go back over this. Hey, Last Rhino. Um, what's going on, my man? Uh, ECPT4 Hagerman Tuba. This one you can get readily available. Uh, it ships out of Hawaii. The maker is in Hawaii. Um, one of the islands there. The the T4 is also made in the U.S., but right now they are out of stock, and I believe they will have more stock at a later date, but it's uh, unconfirmed, and there's no set time frame for that, so something to be aware of. They both share similar uh, topologies as far as how they're made. Um, the components make a big difference between the two. Uh, 
brief summary when I was listening. I had the Verite closed uh, on low Z and high Z for both of them. The high Z was fantastic with the Verite closed. Uh, I do think that the T4 is a wider stage, has a little more detail, has more depth to it, has better uh, image separation, it has uh, more punch in the base uh, in the low end. The, the Hagerman tuba has a very similar sound profile or signature. The pieces that I found interesting with it was the stage was, was kind of brought in, uh, was a little more shallow. The uh, bass was not as impactful or present. Um, it's not, not bad, not in a bad way, but just not as present or impactful as the, the T4. Um, the piano notes, uh, wherever they live, and they were more forward than the T4. Uh, not necessarily brighter, but just seemed to have a better presence. Both sounded fantastic as far as the piano goes. This one just had that presence a little more forward, and that could be due to the, the closed-in stage. Um, but it did seem like the piano's notes were more forward. And I was listening to Signal in the Noise, um, Go Go Penguin, for the entire part of that setup. Um, so there you go. Uh, yeah, no worries, Martin. Um, which headphones would you listen to directly out of the TT2? So directly out of TT2 um, on low Z. So they both have a high and low Z. On low Z, the T, 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 oh, sorry, you said T, 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 too many T's in this, <laughs> this scenario. <laughs> I got the T, T, T chord, the T4, and the tuba. <laughs> um, uh, headphones direct out of the T, T, T. I personally, I find that the T, T, T straight out of the that amp, I really like it. Um, the yeah it has a little hint of purple on the the ecp t4 i have a LED, purple led in there uh the tt2 though um i actually like all of my headphones out of the the tt2 i do find though there's uh that the tt2 solid state is on par with like the phonitor it's a little bit wider um it seems like details a little bit better but the weird thing is when you do um balance out to the phonitor for instance i found that the phonitor had like a a I think that the, as far as an all-in-one, the TT2 is fantastic. Like it's 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 probably one of the best all-in-ones you can get, um, and you pay for it. Um, but that being said, the DAC is still the uh, thing that kind of outshines the amp. And and usually with all-in-ones, that's usually the case for these. Like there's usually something that's not implemented as good as the other part of it as an all-in-one. Uh, like for instance, the RME, as good as that amp is. Uh, in the RME ADI2 DAC, the amp is also probably the not as good of implementation as, say, the DAC is on that, um, or the EQ pieces of that. In fact, I would even say that the EQ part of the RME is probably the, the shining light on that particular all-in-one, whereas the uh, Chord TT2 is, is probably per, as close as you can get to a balanced, where everything is just really good. Uh, but I will say that the balanced out to the Foner XE, there's just something nice about that combo um yeah and as far as the the headphones are i mean it's funny you mentioned the aeolus because i was actually on an aeolus kick uh the past two days so i've been listening to these my wonderful cushy boys as i call them it's the uh, perforated suede with the pilot pad suede um and i did listen to them out of the the cord tt2 as a solid state but uh i will say though my favorite pairing right now is the DAC to the T4 and that's it's just I'm a more of a tube guy but like that's that's why that these things sound fantastic with that um, so back to the ECP T4 and the Hagerman tuba the things that I like listening to out of like the low Z for instance uh, Focal uh, Stelia uh, this this combo is really good with that um, I haven't really listened to planars out of it too much I did think that the Ananda got better um, when I had that. I actually don't have the Ananda here any longer. Um, but I do think that the the Ananda actually, I, all of my ish, issues, I'm air quoting right now, I don't think you can see me because I have it in the wrong camera. But I did find that the T4 and the Hagerman tuba both brought um, the Ananda to a more enjoyable listen for myself. Uh, not that I think that the Ananda is a bad headphone, it's just not my, my preference. And I found that with the with those two, it, it did get a little bit more in line with how I 
I like things um, for those. So what do you guys think? Do you want to do the LCD GX with these next? Or do you want to do the Stelia? Uh, I kind of want to do... Actually, no, I'm just going to do the LCD GX because I, I think that that's a good and interesting um, pairing because of Planar. And Planars can be sometimes tough to... In fact, I'll use my ZMF Verites cable with these. Just pull them out of my Verite clothes here real quick. Um, to give you guys an idea of how these sound. And we'll go, we'll start in low Z for both. Uh, I'll start with the T4. Um, anyways, how's everybody doing? Well, how's How's life in your guys' parts of the world? Hopefully everyone's staying safe and trying to stay sane in all these lockdowns and what have you. Um, fun fun thing, I started doing, uh, reading a bunch of, or listening to audiobooks. I'm, I'm almost, I'm just over halfway through uh, uh, The Way of Kings. Brandon Sanderson series, the latest book, so that's fantastic. I've been enjoying that. Side fun note. And all right. So Ozzy, L C D G X on um Oh nice. Last Rhino, M Scaler. Oh, it won't be on Christmas Day. Gnarly. Um, I'm hoping to pick up an M Scaler to to demo uh, this week sometime. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. It's you know with all the craziness that's happening, you have to you have to stay safe and what have you. LCDGX, uh, ECPT4. I'm just gonna stick with Signal and the Noise, Go Go Penguin, and at the end of this, we'll we'll do some fun random tracks between the 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 two amps. Uh, and depending on, I guess we'll we'll go back to the Verite closed or whatever headphone we have. On hand at the time. Let me switch back to T4. Uh, so this is low Z, go go penguin. Low Z, I have to turn up the volume a little bit higher. Ooh, ooh. That is, uh, that is punchy on the T4. Hopefully, let me move away from the mic maybe. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, so bass is more present. The the I can. It's a little bit more. The imaging isn't as separated. The piano sounds really good. It's very uh, ethereal, almost sounding. Um. Oh man, I miss watching soccer, Martin. I should I should try watching. I need to watch more soccer. Um. I'm not the biggest sports watcher though, so. Um, wow. So uh, the tuba and espresso both seem to offer a neutral tube flavor. Maybe the tuba is a bit more versatile. Um, that's actually a good comparison, I would say. Between, I would say, that, but that is, there's a difference where the, I believe the Espressivo is more of your traditional tube amp, and the the high the tuba Hager Hagerman tuba is more of a hybrid. So I believe the tuba would be more um, versatile because you can it has that low Z, it has that more of that solid state um, ability to it, where it it won't get uh, with certain headphones, on like especially low impedance ones, it will get. Well, not always, but the, the Felix stuff does really good with the low impedance stuff. But that's actually a good uh, comparison that would be interesting to have to do. Um, but yeah, that, I, I don't, and I haven't heard the Espressivo. Uh, that's one of the ones I have not heard. Um, but that might be a good, based on what everyone tells me, that might be, or even the Echo. The Echo might be another compare, like another uh, alternative. You wanted to go like a pure tube amp. The Echo might be a good alternative as a good entry level to the Hagerman tuba. I would say that the Hagerman would definitely be more versatile than the the Echo, but it's but that's you know apples and oranges to some level. You're getting different styles of um, amp there, but they are. I would say those are pretty comparable um, between those two. Uh, anyways, the LCD GX did really well. I do I do think that it's uh, the bass. And it was really solid. Um, 
capabilities of the headphone. It was just a smooth listen. It did seem to have a little bit less imaging with with uh, with it overall. But that's usually that's kind of this headphones more that I'm going from <laughs> uh, a Verite close to these, which is a completely different beast. Um, I was more trying to see how how these did with performance as far as like a planar versus. A dynamic or a you know high impedance so I'm gonna to switch to high impedance with this and go back over we're just gonna start playing again see how it handles it um, with high impedance it definitely goes it, it the presence of course is gonna be more there it's that loudness thing um, nothing really lost it's just louder it's more 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 oomph behind everything Clean sounding, enjoyable. Honestly, even on high impedance, this sounds pretty good with the the GX. So, um, kind of an interesting kind of play there. Let's switch to the Hagerman tuba and switch that out and start here. Wow, it, it sounds <laughs> so lowzy. It, it sounds like th that's interesting because these aren't giving me the stage that the Verite had, but from a like comparing them with these headphones, they actually sound very similar. The, the amps, both they, they have the same kind of, they're even closer now with these. So that kind of shows you when you have like a higher level, pr higher pr technical or higher performing headphone that you can pick apart certain things easier or uh, more readily with the different um with your chain with your gear um yeah these sound so similar even on uh between these two like it's so it's bananas how similar these sound with these headphones like it's it's it was i don't know if i could pick apart so i just switched to high z for the uh uh tuba real quick um so you can see that so i switched to high z now i'm gonna listen again um Let's go back a little bit. Yeah, like it's it's tough. It's tough to compare these two with these. It's they're perform with these headphones. These perform very, very way closer than with the Verites. Uh, but yeah, oh the SW fifty one. Um, that one I hear a lot of good things about um, Ben. Uh, that that one's really interesting. It's a bit obscure, but it's kind of like the alternative to the Eddie Current ZDT Junior, which I do have. I actually sent that out to Chrono, and he's been using that as his tube amp. Um, and they're supposed to be very similar. Elnrick, I believe, has heard both, and I believe he prefers the SW51 Plus. Correct me if I'm wrong, Elnrick, but that's that's something to pay attention to. That's another really good entry level amp. Is the for tubes is the uh, SW51 plus and that's more readily available than say the something like an Eddie Current ZDT Junior which once again is a lot of these things like a lot of the amps sometimes because they're handmade or they're made by small boutique shops or what have you um, or they're just limited runs they're hard to get a hold of or hard to get um, get them uh, yes Martin this is Jeremy's tuba without the wood panels that is correct he took the wood panels off for shipping reasons I believe um, yeah, and, yeah, Elric, yeah, you have her both. So yeah, and I it, and correct me if I was wrong in my <laughs> my what I was saying about those. Um, so uh, real quick, uh, interesting thing: this with these headphones on these two amps, the amps become closer in performance. I did think that the I do think the T four is a still slight. It still sounds a little bit better, but it's surprisingly close with these headphones, which. Um, is more of a showcase of how uh, a higher, not even higher, but a, a technically higher performer or a headphone such as the Verites or let's say a Stelia or like an HC100, you'd be able to pick those apart a little bit better. Um, but as far as planars go, this this didn't. I didn't get the bloom that you would get with a or like a bloatiness or a muddiness that usually with tubes and planars you get with with this combo. So it was, that was pretty enjoyable. And the same thing with the Ananda when I had those. I do not have those any longer. But when I did do the that and use these with that specific headphone, I felt that it these amps helped um, my enjoyment of those particular headphones personally. 
Uh, I don't think they're a bad headphone. They're just not my preferred taste or, or style of headphone. Um, so I guess with that, we'll go into any other headphones you guys wanted me to try. And then if not, I can go into the lovely, go back to putting on the the closed backs and listening to stuff like baby metal before <laughs> jumping off uh, <laughs> you know how i feel about how they perform with a baby metal or some other crazy track that will probably make me talk really loud and melt my brain a little bit and not be able to, to chat while, while listening um but i as far as like the if you're looking for a, a really good sounding tube amp that's entry level or more and like for me the t4 is my in-game hybrid it's the one that i i'm kind of that's that's the one i'm done with um but if you're kind of jumping in and want to get that taste of it i would say the tuba is a great jump off point into tubes um plenty of other tubes jumps off uh elmrick's kind of mentioned it here uh the zdt dream was a little bloomy can be a little muddy that's for sure um and then you and they're harder to tube roll for the EDC ZDT Junior, but they're also like impossible to get now because Drop's not making them anymore. Um, let's see. Um, but they, yeah, the SW fifty one. I've heard lots of really good things about that one. And I think that one's even that's about the same price as the SW fifty one, as I recall. Roughly, I think that's around three fifty or four hundred dollars. I think for that one, and then. The next stage up would be like, not even next stage up, but the next price point up would be like the Echo, Felix Audio Echo, which I think is around the $500 price point. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then the Tuba is roughly between six and $700. I think he's even having a sale right now. Um, not that that's a huge difference. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see, try and go through the... Da, da, da. I do have a bottlehead crack, Lester, I know. I do have that. Um, and the bottlehead crack, I believe, if you're willing, well, if you're willing to pay for it, being like pre-built, there's a lot of uh, Etsy um, people that will make them for you, or you can even have bottlehead do it for you as well and ship it out to you. But I think part of the fun of, oh, Echo's 650. Oof, thanks, Drifting. So that's another good option. Echo would probably be more competitive with the um, tuba, uh, just different flavor of tube, I believe, tube amp. Um, but the ball head crack, to me, I find the ball head crack is more of that traditional, uh, like old school style tube amp. It just, it's, it's warm, it's fast, you need really high um, impedance headphones, um, but it's, it's not as technically performing as, say, like a um, Felix Audio or... Um, even the, the T4 I find slightly more enjoyable because it just does a little bit better job with the uh, separation, imaging, that kind of thing. But the ball head crack though is one of those things that you listen to and you can just melt in your chair and just kind of lose yourself because it's just, it has that, it's like traditional tuby, gooey, warm, kind of envelop you and it's it's powerful and it just it just cranks and it's one of those really enjoyable headphone amps to get tube amps and it's one of the most affordable too so I would definitely if you are up for building it that's probably the way to go because you get a little more enjoyment with knowing that that's yours and you built it like there's there's a really I really enjoy that kind of a thing like when you get a kit like that um, in fact drifting bunnies like I, I just built I got I bought a keyboards kit from him um, and I my first keyboard I ever built and talk about I mean a little bit tedious doing some like the, the lubing and switching but so I, I got this and built it obviously it's the kit and you, you have to solder on the the um this thing's heavy um but this thing i think made it it becomes more impactful for me personally when i can have my own twist on a thing or if i build it myself it matters more to me it becomes more of like um something that it has sentimental value at that point. So that's like the bottle head crack too. When you build it yourself, that's something that you built and it makes it more, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say it. it's more enjoyable when you know that you built that thing. Um, but yeah, uh, 
And yeah, so that and so going back to the, the bottlehead crack, I would say that the bottlehead crack is definitely a more lush, more I hate to use like these artificial terms, but it's really hard to describe it. It's, it's like this enveloping. I think like a a super warm blanket in front of a fire drinking like super super rich hot cocoa <laughs> on a winter day is like a bottlehead crack. I don't know. It's just it's it's very engaging. It's very like impactful. It's um, but you're you're losing out on certain aspects, and you can only use certain headphones with it because it definitely does not um, play very nice with certain um, other headphones. It's definitely I would say the best pairing I've had with that is the Verites and the HD 100. Um, and also, there's any actually a lot of the ZMS pair pair really well with Bottlehead Crack, but uh, I do think that you're missing out on certain details or stage, what have you, when you have the Bottlehead Crack in the mix. Uh, another tube amp to kind of look at is the KNHA1A Mark II, which I do have that one here as well. And I find that one to be, it's actually about the same price point as the tuba, Hagerman tuba. And it's more of your, it's, I'd say it's more competition to the Echo, to be honest. Um, and it's the same design style. Yeah, the crack is criminally underrated. It's pretty fantastic. Um, and the speedball, I also had the speedball. I did not have the speedball on the crack for a long time. I did like six months without it, and then I added it later on. Um, so yeah, that's something to be to take into consideration. Without the speedball, it definitely is. It's way more tubey, gooey, lush, ro romantic. I don't know how you want to talk about it that way, but um, anyways, the KNHA One A Mark II is probably more in line with the Echo as far as sound signature it's also i believe even more neutral than the echo with the tubes so uh, and depending on how you what tubes you get you can probably warm it up a little bit but that one's definitely a more uh neutral tube amp is a can ha1a mark ii and it's a beautiful amp that one's the one that looks like a speedboat with the porthole that looks in on the tubes um an old school 1950 speedboat uh yeah so with that i think we're pushing into the last 10 minutes i will do my traditional um, uh, baby metal and at the end of the baby metal I'll uh, see how these both do I'm going to have them in high Z for both and uh, listen with the verite closed um, this is for Elnerk of course <laughs> um, let's see here I have to go find find baby metal okay give me chocolate baby metal I did save this it's right on the top of my favorites here um, oop, I have to switch. Oof. Um, oof. Actually, like, it does, these do really well <laughs> for... It's separating really well. Like it's it's actually separating really well with this combo. Like I'm picking up all different. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the VU meters are just pegged. <laughs> uh, it's it's baby metal, but. Oh, wow, that's like intense. Um, uh, um, I should, okay, Ooh, uh, did really well. It's the, the, the T4. T4 did pretty fantastic, separated well. Uh, lots of impact. The highs are definitely like in your face. The, the, it's, you know, baby metal, high rock and roll, heavy metal style. Um, it's definitely in your face. It's definitely, uh, bright and, and impactful and punchy uh so yeah it's it is what it is now we'll go back and do it again on the Hagerman tube and see if I can hear a difference between the two all right hi Z let's turn it down a little bit just in case I don't want to blow my ears out we'll go back a little bit and switch it out uh more intimate and the stage isn't as deep once again. It's uh the detail and imaging is there, but it's not as uh in my face. Between like the guitars and the drums and everything, like it's 
it's a little more uh, reasonable. I can, it's, it's shrill. It's very shrill. Yeah, it's very busy and shrill, but it's not as bad as with the T4. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like the Hagerman tuba, it was a little more enjoyable with those, that, that combo, uh, baby metal specifically. They're still shrill. It's still very fast. It's still very like just punching you in the face with brass knuckles while someone screams at you right after you took a shot of tequila and someone else in the other ear is whistling at you and the other person is holding your head and shaking it. That's kind of what it's like. Um, or Mexico spring break <laughs> um so let's see here uh go through a couple questions uh da, da, da. yeah running joke baby it's, it's worth it it's definitely something to be pushed on and, and kind of talked about in the sense of like different genres and i went from literally from a go go penguin jazz thing to baby metal that's all i listened to this time um that's fine um Enric, let's see. Going back up, yeah, crack definitely underrated, very criminally underrated, especially if you build it yourself. It's such a good experience, and it's very fun to do. Um, a little bit like ah, uh, like especially if you've never soldered anything before or, or anything that level. Um, it's not that bad. It's not that tough, and they give you really good instructions. Um, it's just point to point solders, and you just you know you go through it and just take your time. Um, follow the instructions. Look at YouTube videos. It's not that bad. I know plenty of people that have done it with no zero experience soldering and been fine and then i've also known a couple people that have literally melted the entire thing and, and completely was a waste of money for them so but that's usually far and few between um uh da, 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 so we see if that can have a combo can handle busy and yeah exactly that baby metals that's why i don't mind it like to some level like it's can't can it handle the speed can it handle the shrillness can it handle like just all that at once um and I'm using Cobas, yeah. So uh, test tech, um, that's what's below. Uh, I have it showing on the video here. Um, is Cobas, and it's, I'm just using a, I'm just literally an image over the top and posted it there. Um, let's see, uh, Jean Sans Pure, Pure. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, let's see, Tana, thanks for the show. Oh yeah, no worries, man. It's I just, it's like I biggest thing I enjoy is talking with you guys in live chat. It's part like partly and probably the main reason I enjoy doing this so much. Um, and I'm not these aren't like reviews. These are more impressions and my experiences with an item. It's not really something I um, think of as like these are just my experiences. Not the, my opinions are my opinions. And if it helps someone maybe align or they think they like the same stuff, it might help them potentially may align with something that might give them an idea of what these things can can do. Um, so not necessarily review, but just more my experience um, and impressions. Uh, ECP, getting some exposure. Yeah, that's the ECP. Like I, the other one I really want to get from ECP is the 3F, the Ravenswood 3F, or I don't think it's considered Ravenswood, whatever wood they have on. The 3F, though, ECP 3F is, is the solid state version of the T4, and I, well, not really. They're different, but it's the solid state. ECP and that one I really want to get one of those um, especially after my time with the T4 uh, that's one of I'd love to stack them I think that'd be like an epic stack of awesomeness amps <laughs> um, my top three tube amps okay uh, no that's not sacrilege I think um, currently my top three that I own um, would be the T4 the bottlehead crack and the KN HA one A Mark II that I own, um, and probably in the order that my preference would probably be T four first, uh, Bottlehead Crack second, and then KN third. Uh, for ones that I've heard but do not own, whew, that's tougher. I would say, not in no particular order. I would have to go with the Pendant um, ZMFs uh, Pendant made by Amps and Sound. Um, the Woo Audio mono blocks, those are fantastic, but they're also ridiculously expensive. And a friend of mine has them, and I've listened to them multiple times, and they are uh, bananas good. These 300B um, tubes, and they're, I think they're WA 23s or something like that, is what the name of them is. But it's the WA 23, WA, 
Woo Audio's mono block tube amps, and they're like these behemoths, and they weigh like 60 pounds each. They're ridiculous. Um, those are also some of the best I've ever heard. Another fan, like honestly, one of my favorites I've ever heard, but there, it's another one that's almost impossible to get, is the um, Glenn. I'm actually going to double up. The Glenn OTL, uh, both the 300B and a standard one. I've heard both. I've heard at ZM Festivus, um, the last ZM Festivus was, I heard both of those and they, those are really good amps for tube amps. Um, but for ones that you can easily readily get, I would say, uh, also the Mogwai, the Mogwai heard that at ZM Festivus and I, I just shortly, but in that brief time, I really like that one. Those are anything ramps and sound is really good, um, that I have heard personally. And I really like those, those, all those ones, those, that general flavor. The pendant is also what I would consider to be um, a neutral tube amp, but it's like the top level. It'd be like kind of like the 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 T four for me. It would be like that my my top level. I'd put it up there with like the Felix Audio, kind of like neutral ones. Which I think which one is that? That's the um, Euphoria. Is that the more neutral one? Um, but anyways, that I really like the pendant, and I really enjoyed. Um, it was more of a neutral. The pendant is more neutral. Uh, and let's see, I think that, those would be my top ones for right now that I would kind of consider pretty beast. And I do, but one I really want to try, I haven't heard yet, and I want to try it. I want to try that Can HA 6A, the new tube amp that they have. And I think it's got enough time now where it, that any issues um, it should have been ironed out by now. Um, that's the one I'm really looking forward to uh, hopefully eventually getting to try. That would be a fun one to try. I think that's, I think it looks fantastic one and then it's, it's got some pretty good tube rolling options in that one. And has a view meters, which view meters. Um, anyhow, back to these. Uh, I do use Kobas. Yep. I already said that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will definitely need some <laughs> audio file to go and listen to my more chill music after this. Um, uh, yeah, Elric, I would love to borrow yours. I think I would have a hard time giving it up, though, so that might be a dangerous proposition for you. <laughs> um, I've heard the 3F before, by the way, and it is... it is uh, it, it sounds great. It's it's a lovely amp. It's one of those really awesome ones, and it and it pairs really well with a lot of headphones. I think it was originally made for Focal's line, but it, it works so good with so many other headphones. Um, let's see, I believe it was Zach. Uh, carries Glen. Yeah, that's the one I listened to. As a matter of fact, the Zach's Glen OTL is the one I listened to, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I also listened to a couple other people's from Headfies at CM Festivus's Glens, and there's a bunch there at CM Festivus uh, the last time, and it was whew, really good. Um, what do you think about NOS tube reliability? Uh, that's one thing with tubes, man. Like tubes, um, most of them are pretty reliable. Like reality of the matter is, like most of them are built especially the new old stock or even like the old ones, a lot of them are built for taking a beating. So usually they're pretty good, uh, but do know that you're buying expensive tubes that they have a, a shelf life. There is there is a, a, a definitive finite amount of time that you get to have those tubes and they're performing at peak performance as well. And you have to warm them up. You have to, there's a lot to do with tubes. Tubes are not always for everybody, um, but just beware that if you do get in tubes, um, there is limited stock of these like, you know, unicorn tubes, there's limited. And so you're going to pay a heavy price for something that has a very finite shelf uh, life. Um, so think of it like whiskey, even you can even think tubes are like whiskey where it's something you're going to enjoy, but know that eventually you're going to run out of it. <laughs> you're going to get to the end of the bottle. You're going to get to the end of the tube life. It's something that just, it's there. It is what it is. Um, a uh, few of my power tubes have a hum, and I find that very yeah. And that's the other thing with tubes. Um, some will have hum, and then it, and you can chase it. Sometimes it's not necessarily the tube. Sometimes it can be anything from power feedback to like a cell phone. If you put your cell phone too near to certain tube amps, I think hybrids tend to be a little more um, resilient to that kind of stuff, um, just by the nature of them. That's why I kind of like the the T4 so much. Is it's it's almost plug and play. I don't have to worry about so much with the noise. Um, and it's, and same with the tube, actually, I haven't had any issues with noise with that one. Um, but yeah, tube noise can be a real pain to chase down and then determine that it's actually the tube making the noise and not something else. Um, I've done that multitude time, multiple, multiple times with the bottle head crack to my other tube. And it's a real pain in the butt, but once you get it down, it's really nice. Um, 
and I still thinking about picking up a high-end solid state for the MP sometime. And so that's another thing with uh, planars, especially solid states do tend to work better. But the three F I think would be fantastic with those. In fact, Elnick has the the um, MP, and I, he might be able to tell you a good combo. Oh yeah, Black Widow, which is another one I would love to get. But the Black Widow is another one of those, which is an Eddie Current thing. Who he no longer makes amps, so those are another thing. Like uh, some of these amps, like I was saying, they they just go away because people buy them and don't put them back on the used market, and you just can't buy them anymore unless you get lucky and find one on the used market or or know someone that will sell it to you. Um, and I, I've been looking at, at the Black Widow for a long time. It's one of my original ones I want to listen to as well. And I've heard it at different places, and it's fantastic. Another fantastic solid state amp, um, but it's one of those things where you're not really. If it breaks, you have to know an electrician or know how to do electrical engineering to fix those things, or if a cap pops, or you know all that kind of stuff. And a lot of the stuff is that way, so that's something to be aware of. Um, yeah, and I've yeah, Blackwood is definitely, and from my experience, was a little bit warmer than a three F. Um, have you heard the MP on a GSX Mini? I have not heard an MP on GSX Mini. I have heard a GSX Mini, and as I recall, it was um, really enjoyable amp. It did lean a little bit more on the warm side. It, would, it speaking of like the the maybe I might, I might be confusing it, but um, this was once again. I don't really like talking too much about stuff that I only heard in passing. Um, but I did like the GSX Mini when I did listen to it. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to go into detail about it because it's audio memory. Um, that, yeah, that would be a good. That is, it, it would be a good uh, pairing though from my limited time with it. Uh, seems to be a good pairing that I have not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elric, you're gonna turn into Jeremy if you're not careful. Um, I was just joking with him uh, last night about how he he has like ninety percent of his gear out. Um, the baby blue ones, um, baby blue ones. Oh, the though the tube monger. Those, uh, so the baby blue ones. Are you talking about um, Martin? We're talking about these. This is a tube monger, and then there's on the liquid platinum that Jeremy has. He has the tube monger. Uh, they look kind of like little Christmas lights, and I believe um, Marcello has those now. And so those are interesting. Those are actually really cool sounding little things, but they're like these little tiny things. But uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I think some people slow it a bit. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm confusing it. I think you might be right last round. I, I like I said, it's been a while and I'm I'm in my head I'm thinking of what am I thinking of? There's one that's like a warmer Oh, maybe I'm thinking of the is it head amp or lake people? I don't know. I'm thinking of a different one maybe than the GSX Mini. You know what I think I'm thinking of is the uh oh, why can't I think of it? It's it'll come to me after I shut off the stream probably, but um uh, it's another one that just, I think Drop just had a version of it. Bioelectric, thank you. That's the one I was thinking of. Thanks, Last Rhino. I think that's what I was thinking of. Um, I, but I've only, once again, that's another one that I've only heard in passing. So, uh, yeah, actually, Jean, uh, Jean Sans, um Elnric has, he has both <laughs> currently, and he could probably speak on that more. And yeah, March out of the Christmas light tubes. So they're, they're, they're cool. They sound really good. Um, for what they are, uh, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was the Violectric I was thinking of then. Yeah, and that one, I actually, I would actually want to get a Violectric, but it's like one of those things where I'm like, ah, oh, what? I, now that I have the cord, it's kind of that's it's a um, kind of a null and void for me right now. Uh, yeah, he did, and so that's the thing with those those two monger tubes, the little Christmas light ones. They do really well with the Mjolnir. Um, and he, in fact, I think Jeremy even said he preferred them out of the Mjolnir, which is pretty. And that's another fantastic tube hybrid. Tube hybrid. Is that that's a tube hybrid amp, I believe. Mjolnir. But it's a, it's Shit's um, tube amp. One of their one of their tube amps. Really good. Yeah, and that's and that last round. Same. That's why the reason why I didn't go with the bioelectrics. Now with the cord, it's like why. <laughs> it, I, I kind of hit my in-game solid state now I'm chasing uh, I got, and now my T4 is my in-game hybrid and now I'm going to chase maybe my in-game uh, set and OTL tube amps is my next from there um, so uh, I'll let uh, Eleanor Keith yes he's I'll let, so he's talking to right now in the live chat. Elnick's kind of passing on the what his preferences or not preferences, but his experience with the Black Widow Two by Eddie Current and the T Four. Um, 
and yeah, super weird topology on the Majolner. Majolner is really good though. It's just big. The, the ship makes big amps, man. Um, outside of their obviously their little uh, stacks and what have you. Um, but yeah, I think with that, uh, I'll wait for Elnick to maybe put something in there. But if not, um, you guys can go to the forum and maybe El uh, Elnick, if you feel up to it. Um, Oh, there you go. He nailed it. T4 better overall, in my opinion, but it is close uh, over the Black Widow. But then that's, you're also thinking, you have to compare this apples to oranges. T4 is a tube hybrid, and the Black Widow is a solid state, which is pretty telling of the Black Widow. And I would say, here's the other thing to think about with these things, is, um, I was talking to somebody else about this the other day, um, is some of these things have a signature that's geared towards what is kind of like the new popular hotness right now which would be like that monitor sound or like that music engineering sound signature which is like bright neutral clinical um and then stuff like tubes tend to be more uh especially in the audio world that traditional enjoyment sound like the audiophile enjoyment that was and so that's something to be aware of too. So if you prefer a more analytical engineering side kind of sound, um, tubes might not always be your thing. Solid states would probably be better. And then you also have to be aware of some amps are more geared towards that enjoyment factor, such as the Black Widow um, types. And even uh, the shit amps tend to be a little more geared towards that traditional audiophile enjoyment side of the house rather than the neutral, bright um, uh, kind of monitoring style of like an engineer would an engineer would want to hear um which for me isn't that most isn't the most enjoyable i'm just going to straight up say it i much prefer the traditional audiophile sound signatures um so uh, an example of something that would be more neutral and, and for engineering potentially not that that's what it would be used for but would be uh marketed as a for con consumers and not necessarily for engineers but has a similar kind of engineering sound would be like the thx stuff that's that tends to have more of that neutral bright um, kind of sound. Um, also the Fonitor, I have the Fonitor and that's another one that would be, I would consider that one. I don't necessarily think that one's bright per se, as much as I think that the Fonitor is more geared towards an engineering side of the house, but it's one of those amps that's unique in that it just gets out of the way. It just, it, it whatever your chain is, it accentuates anything on either side of that amp is what the, the Fonitor is good at. Like, so if the DAC is warm, it's gonna present warm to your headphones. And if your headphones are warm, it's gonna present those even more warm. And if they're bright on either side, it's just gonna, it's just, it just accentuates that. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't color it, in my opinion, from my experience. That's how I kind of view the Fonitor. Um, yeah, and the CHX isn't necessarily neutral, but that's just more like that, I don't know, that, that's that, it's not that uh, traditional audiophile enjoyment signature for me and i don't think there's anything wrong with thx or any of that kind of stuff or any of those other things i just for me personally it's not my cup of tea so that would give you a good understanding of when you're listening to what i have to say about these things um how that aligns with your preferences and if that is something worth listening about or kind of understanding um and then I think after this next few, I'm going to go ahead and hit sign off because we are definitely pushed into past an hour now. <laughs> um, let's see. If they are similar, I will pass on the two. Yeah. Um, if you already have a Black Widow, it sounds like, um, then the T4 might be uh, extra. Not maybe, something, maybe choose something else. Go for something else a little more different. And then on top of that, T4s are hard to find right now. Um, and yeah, neither of them suck. That is very true. Uh, T4 is yeah, T4 is definitely not easy to find, Luke. Um, it doesn't pop up used a lot, but they are. I believe they are going to be putting out new T4s here. In the, as soon as they get um, materials to to build them again, I think that was one of the issues that they had issues is the the supply and demand. Obviously, with COVID, everything else like that, it was just harder to get the supply they needed to build more amps. Um, and they use really high quality parts in the in the ECP stuff, so that's why it, they they're real picky about what they put in there. They aren't just gonna. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's harder to find stock of it because they have they have really set standards on what they put in there. Um, and that's just me coming up with that. It's not he, that's it's hearsay. That's just my thought process on it. Oh, you're good, Elric. I appreciate you chatting with me and, and talking with you. That's, that's the point of being in the community is having people that have the experience to be able to pass it along. And that's I enjoy facilitating that. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that's pretty much 
Eleanor, you killed it. Thank you so much for answering those questions. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Yep, I think I was with that. Um, oh, DNA Starlet. Sorry, Martin. Yes, the that's another good one. Um, I've only heard it briefly. That is another... The DNA stuff um, are also really good. Um, I just haven't heard them enough, and I... I kind of dismiss them because you can't change the color. <laughs> and so like for me, like there's this weird block where I, I think they're great. I just, for me, for a reason when I, I don't think of them because I, I kind of put them out of my mind because I know I can't have them be purple. So if you know that you can, if you can get them in purple, I might, I might put them back in my forefront because they are fantastic. Um, anyways, on that note, um, I will chat with you guys online. Um, and uh, on the forums, you can see the links below to the forums, uh, any discords that I'm in. I'm more than happy to chat with everybody there. And I will see you guys. Uh, I believe we're going to do another headphone show of probably this week. Not sure when yet, but keep an eye out for that on the headphone show. And um, that's also linked below. Uh, a bunch of reviews there, a lot of fun stuff. And I will check that. Yeah, I'm like, Jesus, man. <laughs> Hey, Seuss. <laughs> I'll chat with you guys later. Um, Elric has all the toys that I want, damn it. Um, <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, anyways, cheers, guys and gals. Have a good one. And second end button.